So we're making progress on the shovel head here for the curved bike over the course of several months, actually. It's a bit of a complicated build because of not only the poor condition of the cases, uh, everything that's led up to it from you know, these old engines can take a lot of abuse over the years they, we still have heads to do we're in process there'll be several videos on the challenges with this particular engine as it's a two rear cylinder head engine relatively unique so that brings up a lot of challenges with rocker arm alignment and having a machine rocker arm shafts centered up on valve stem just the condition of the heads themselves how They've been machined many, many times over their 50-year lifespan. So we've got a lot of content coming on just the heads alone. Now, where we're at up, up to this point, uh, you've, you've seen preparation. You've seen uh, of the case. You've seen the end play get checked and that get set up. Now, in the last time I, I did a video, you watched me set up these studs. Uh, being we're using acorn nuts, stylish thing, and attractive. You have to be careful using acorn nuts on these things, uh, be, mainly because of the stud length and when you tighten those things down. You can actually be just tightening one nut and only have one or two threads on the opposite side. So that step of checking the depth of the acorn nut, actually running the stud through the case, measuring on both sides, is a pretty important step. Also, this surface here, I uh, checked it for flatness. That's very important to make sure you maintain an oil pump seal and then also put a nice, just a smooth finish on it uh, to, to make sure that that gasket's gonna seal up good. So uh, the other thing we've done is checked our breather port here. You'll be able to see more of this when I move the camera. Uh, our breather gear, I've checked clearance with that uh, in the, the hole there to our actual breather unit here. That's one of the things that was unique about these uh, versus your when your twin cam came along. So Evos and these shovels and back. Uh, they actually had a timed breather system so as it's timed to the cam and timed to the pinion gear and as this turns <coughs> it opens this window and allows it to breathe at just the right time so it was a, a pretty efficient crankcase breathing system in that aspect so we've already fitted our breather now there are several other aspects of, of building one of these gear cases everything has an in play adjustment so in going forward then we're going to take a look at this breather there are shims here we'll have to measure that in play on that we'll also have to measure the in play of the camshaft and then there are shims that go behind that a thrust washer that backs that up so we're going to be setting that in play of course i have already put the the cam bearing in there so that part is good to go and we're going to assemble the oil pump now throughout this build i'm using great parts from a lot of people uh comedic uh, it's we're using all comedic gaskets in it and we're going to have quite a few components from gems that i'm looking forward to showing you guys uh, I'm, I'm excited about that because we'll be using the gems billet oil pump we'll be using their top end oiler retrofit kit now on these engines they didn't oil through the push rods like it did on evo and later you actually had a solid push rod and the oiling was done through this hole here it went up a tube i'm sure you've seen pictures of shovel heads where you had a tube that went up to the rocker box and then a tube that went from one rocker box to the other and that oil would travel through there go through the rocker box feed oil to the the rocker and the valve stem uh, through uh, ports in the rocker shaft and in the rocker box itself well gems has this awesome retrofit kit that turns it into a push rod oiler and what it includes are their tappet blocks which i don't have sit sitting here so they have their tappet blocks it includes their tappets and it also a set of push rods and a set of 1.5 ratio rocker arms you need to be aware of that so this one will actually oil through the tappets up through the push rod and then oil the rocker that way and it of course it is a set of roller rockers as well so we'll be featuring that gems product as well and uh, a few other little tidbits along the way so let's uh let's hop in and, and get this built up 
Now, this would be the GEMS billet oil pump. It, it comes out of the box assembled, but just with anything else, you want to disassemble it and have a look, inspect, to make sure there's no trash in it or anything, and of course, fill it with assembly lube. Now, the things they've already done, there is a small seal that's in here. They've already installed that seal. There is a key that goes inside the, this gear here, and uh, this being a drive gear. And then there's also a snap ring on there. We want to make sure that snap ring is on there really good. And it, but in typical fashion, things out of the box from gyms are, are uh, uh, pretty much good to go. You can actually slide this gear a little bit and see the key that's inside there. I do want to verify that that key is there. Of course, you can feel it this way as well. Okay, just like the outer, there's a small key that goes in here. Then you have this gear here. So we're going to slide, get this started. Make sure we don't lose the one on the other side. I'm going to slide that key into place. And then we can slide our gear in there. And of course, you, you, know, you want to make sure your key is in there all the way. And uh, your gear should sit flush on on both sides that, and that will tell you whether or not your key is trapped in there or not. You can also spin this just to make sure it's in there. Drop our other gear into place. And we'll put a little more assembly lube in here. Now for your gasket, I would not recommend using any kind of gasket sealer on this. You got tiny oil holes here. So I would just use a very light film of grease over the entire gasket. You can use a white lithium. Uh, in this, I've got a tube of, of AMSOIL grease. And uh, the grease does a good job of actually holding the gasket in place for you as well. So make sure that's lined up good. Now we can, <clears throat> now we can take our oil pump. I'm going to put some assembly lube on the drive shaft here. And I would recommend on this key, the keyway here, uh, to make this a little easier to slide this together, go ahead and rotate it so that the drive shaft is with the keyway is facing up so that when we slide it in, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to get that together. Before we go on all the way with it, I'm just going to grab a couple screws just to use as alignment. I want to make sure I'm not pinching my gasket or anything like that. Now, before you bolt your pump down, you still got to get the oil pump drive gear in here. So what I've done, I've got the pump out a little bit. I know my gasket's still aligned because I got the bolts in there. I've got the, the drive shaft pulled out just a little bit here. Make certain of that key that you don't lose it. That's in there. And we need to shift that shaft over just enough that we can get this drive gear in, get its key in there, and then uh, put the snap ring on it. This, this gear here that's on the crank, and of course there's a, a small spacer here. This should this gear right here should not be locked down completely. It should have a little bit of float to it, which you'll see that when we actually go on with the, the pinion gear. And then there's also things you have to think about uh, on the early nose cone engines in back. You had a different different pitch on your cam gear, breather gear, and pinion gear. So they are interchangeable. You just have to make sure that when uh, you are changing them, that the pitch of the teeth match all the way around with all three gears that pinion gear the breather gear and of course the the cam gear there all right now you can see down inside here is where i've got to get that snap ring onto that shaft that's why we rotated that shaft to where it would be pointing the the keyway would be pointing up it makes it a lot easier to get down in there now these keys again are very small as well as the snap ring so that's your, as you can see, the key there. And so the, the groove actually on this here, you don't have to put the key in. You really can't put the key in on the shaft, get the gear in and all that stuff. So at the end of the shaft, it's slotted all the way to the end, which allows you to take this and then slide, slide it into place.
I want to make sure that snap ring is snapped in there really good. You know, get a get a flashlight, do whatever you got to do uh, to get in there and make sure that it's fully snapped into that groove, and then you're locked. So, by what I'd mentioned before, how this you know floats a little bit, it's the the idea is to you know keep it from binding. Now, I will be using Loctite. I'm not going to put any Loctite on these yet. I'm just going to run the the screw down, just snug it up just a little bit, back it off to where my pump can still you know float around a little and we'll put a small amount of assembly lube on our gears Check my gear, make sure everything's moving nice and smooth. Rotate it around a bit, gear's floating fine. And then we're gonna torque this down. I believe that this is one of the attributes of these old nose cone engines that made them so resilient over the change with the twin cam. So yes, crankshaft run out matters, but if you notice, having this shaft like this the the oil pump itself is not completely reliant on the run out of the the crank that's out here it's driven by this shaft here so if you have a little bit of run out here it's not really going to directly affect the pump now this side of the pinion shaft of course is is supported by the gear case cover which we're going to go grab here in a second all right, now, you always want to check the bore in here. They do sell oversized. This one, fortunately, has not been damaged. Uh, I did just very, very lightly hone it just to clean it up a little bit, but I'm still well within tolerance on our clearance. Now, what we have to do, since this goes in place, the gear case cover goes on here, and also the camshaft, we're going to install these temporarily, and then there are shims uh, that go on the back side of the camshaft, and then also uh, shims for this, uh, the breather gear as well, and we need to check the end play on those. So I'm just going to put a, I want it to float in there relatively easily, so I'm just going to put a small amount, just a very small film of assembly loop on it uh, to make sure it doesn't bind in there. And we'll slap it into place. And this also is a, a product from GEMS that I'm excited to use in this engine. There we go nice and smooth all right you'll notice it has a you may not be able to see it on the camera it has a, a timing mark on it here and when we of course we do our final assembly again it'll be timed to the camshaft and also to that pinion gear to set up the gear case one of the places we need to start is setting up the end play of the breather gear here now uh, on the inside of your gear case cover is actually right here is where that rides so what we need is a the factory spec is one to sixteen thousandths. Now I'm gonna, so we've got a pretty broad tolerance there, but I'm gonna try to shoot it down the middle and be a little bit on the loose side, somewhere around ten thousandths is what I'm looking for for end play. Now you, since it rides here, we're parallel to this surface here, and we're parallel, uh, which is going to be this surface here. All right. So I'm gonna take, we're, we're only using Cometic gaskets on this, and this is one of their Fomite gaskets for the, for the gear case cover. And if you measure the thickness of this gasket, you would find that it's, it's in the ballpark of about 50 thousandths. But if you really grab, you know, grab a corner here and you pinch down on this thing really, really hard, it's collapsing to just over 30 thousandths around 35. I'm going to say it's probably going to compress about another five there. So we need to allow for 30 thousandths thickness on the gasket. And that could vary. Again, remember, we're going to confirm this when we're done. So what I can do, I can start with a, you want to have a very good straight edge here. And what I want to do is, is line this up to where, and using the washers, you can see here, I have a selection of many different thickness thrust washers for this. And we're going to use a, a straight edge and line that up. All right. <clears throat> I have a little bit of end play there. So let's measure the thickness we have there. And I'm at uh, 110 thousandths. So let's see if we can find one that's uh, around 100 and 
That one's 115 thousandths. Let's give that a shot. You want to make sure your breather gear is in there all the way. So let's give this a shot and see if we have any in play. Okay, we have zero in play there, but I want to check and make sure I'm flush with the case. But now remember, we need to allow 30 thousandths for the thickness of our gasket, and then we also need to allow our clearance. So what I want to do is measure this one, and remember our gear case cover is moving out. So we have this one that's flush. We need one that's 30 thousandths thicker, and there's no end play flush with the case. We need one that's 30 thousandths thicker uh, to, to make up for the gasket, moving the cover out. Plus we need to also subtract what we want our end play to be. So basically from here, I'm gonna look for one that's 20 thousandths thicker. So let's measure this spacer and we find that it is at 115 thousandths. So let's add 30 thousandths to that. That's gonna put us at 145 thousandths. Now let's subtract our 10 because we want our end play. That puts us at 135 thousandths. So let's see if we can find one that's at 135. There's 135. And here's our cam. We're gonna run, uh, we're running an Andrews uh, number one grind and they they designed this cam specifically for low compression engines now remember this you know this is a custom bike i i'm, I'm not shooting for power out of this thing this is a reliable 100 percent reliable keep it stock it's got a small battery in it okay so what we have here put a little assembly lube on the back of the cam there and then you also have this thrust washer that goes in you'll notice the ears on it it only goes in there one way and we want to make sure we put that in there in the right direction. Now I'm going to check the cam first and uh, we're going to put the gear case cover on here and then we're going to check with a feeler gauge back there in the back. Just like on the breather gear, I want to give you a way that you can kind of get started and know what spacer to use on the back of the cam to get your in play right there. Because again, when you get cam spacers, they come in a multitude of thicknesses and you don't really know where to start. All right, so the first thing you can do is find a spacer that allows you to flush the gear out and have no in play. All right, so basically, again, we're doing this by feel as a rough, just to give you a rough idea. So right there, I have zero in play. But there's an interesting thing we've got to take a look at. So here on your gear cover, you'll notice you have a bushing. Well, the bushing is not flush to the gasket surface. It actually stands above it. So a couple of ways we can do that. If you have a machinist scale, you can measure it and get an idea, and I'm at roughly at about 60 thousandths, but we want to try to be closer than that. So you can flush out your straight edge here and then take a feeler gauge and measure each end there. Uh, we're at 64 thousandths estimated that this is protruding in. All right, so that's gonna give us a 64 thousandths interference fit of the cam. Let's look at it that way. It's gonna to wanna to push the cam in. We have to also remember that our gasket when we put our gasket on this cover is going to move out an estimated 40 thousandths of an inch okay so if we look at it this way we, we have a 64 thousandths interference fit we put our gasket on it moves out roughly about 40 thousandths we still have a 24 thousandths interference fit but then we so we need to remove that 24 thousandths we also need to remove 10 thousandths to give us our in play, our desired in play there. So whatever spacer I have in here, we would then take, the, to explain the math, 64 thousandths interference fit with the bushing. We're at zero here. This moves out 40, that leaves us 24 thousandths. So we need to move the cam in 24 thousandths. We also need to move it in 10 thousandths more. And so that's 34 thousandths. We need a spacer back here in the back that is 34 thousandths thinner than the one we started with. So let's measure the one we have in there now. And what we have is 90 thousandths. 
So let's go 34 thousandths thinner. So let's put our spacer on. Slide this into place. Let's talk about gaskets for a minute. Now, I only use Cometic gaskets. And an interesting thing on their, their gear case cover here, and as well as their primary covers, tappet block cover gaskets, all of those gaskets, made out of a material called Fomet. Now, the as, same as their fiber gaskets, this is actually impregnated with, uh, with an elastomer, if you will. And when you torque it down, that those elastomers will actually come out of this material and seal against the surface. That's a lot of technology, really. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we put our base gaskets on for the cylinders. But anyway, they sell the gear case cover gaskets in a couple of different thicknesses. Now, one thing that I also wanted to mention is when we put in our oil pump shaft, one thing I, I forgot to mention on that, you also, the, the thickness of the gasket that's used on that oil pump is critically important. Uh, it, it because you have in play that you have to have on that oil pump drive shaft as well and I forgot to mention that so uh, once you get everything assembled and when you get that pump torqued down uh, you want to take a feeler gauge and slide it in between that gear that I showed you and the case or the bushing that goes through and you want to make sure that you have roughly about a ten thousandths in play there as well so you don't want anything to be uh, in a bind in any of this all right so as I said down here you have the oil pump bushing that's in there uh, the shaft bushing and then you can see the side of the gear right there and I want to make sure I've got at least a ten thousandths in there and I had checked it before and my ten thousandths is is perfect And of course there is a key in there. I've already installed the key. And we'll torque this nut to 40 foot-pounds. And it is a left-hand thread, by the way. And you'll have two you'll have two timing marks on your cam you can see there's one there one there this one times with the breather this one times with the pinion Okay, just because we've got the cover on doesn't mean we're done. We still need to verify. We want to double check, triple check our clearances. I can still barely get to the breather gear down there, and of course I can get to the cam. So what I'm looking for is I want to verify I do in fact have one to sixteen thousandths, but my target uh, for this for this build is ten thousandths. Let's see what we have. And one other thing you want to make sure of, I forgot to mention this too while we were building. Uh, when you do your trial assemblies, you also want to check the backlash. Make sure you have, yeah, half to one thousandths backlash as well on your cam gear to your pinion gear. And we, in fact, had that. I had checked that dry. I didn't know the camera wasn't running. Uh, as you saw in the twin cam video, once you put assembly lube on stuff, you can't, it takes away a lot of that backlash but you can still reach down inside and feel it. And we do have a little bit of backlash on there and she runs butter smooth. That's the gear chest and oil pump portion. I wanna give a huge, enormous thanks to the guys at Cometic Gaskets. Uh, we've, we're only getting started on the gasket side of things. I wouldn't run anything else but a Cometic Gasket. Uh, and a huge thanks to Jim's on the oil pump as well. You're gonna get to see a whole lot of other gems stuff as we go forward with tappets tappet blocks and things like that 
then we'll move to pistons and cylinders that'll be the next episode and then the next we're going to get into the heads there's probably going to be two or three videos just on the heads alone for everything that had to be done to those they were in very very rough shape so that's the progress guys thanks a million for watching i hope you are enjoying the build prog progress here for the shovel head in the curved bike and uh, as always take care of yourselves and each other have a good one